Namaste everyone. Welcome to another episode of On The Mat. This week my cat insisted to be part of the practice, so let's just say that we put her on the mat this week. So this is Prakriti, one of my two cats. The other one is Purusha, which is actually currently asleep. And then following the theme for our school last week, we are going into a hip opening sequence that is going to incorporate poses that were practiced then in the basic, essential and intermediate level classes. So you can see the description for the list of those poses. Feel free as you practice today to include a short grounding or meditation session at the start and a nice long shavasana at the end that takes you into a 60 minute practice. Okay. So let's begin our practice. Yoga with cats. Begin your practice from a supine position today. Lying face up on the mat with your arms and legs spread comfortably wide. And then with the eyes closed, take a few moments to arrive. Arrive in your body, on your mat, in your room. Uh-oh. And it suddenly got really hard to breathe. Focusing then on your breath to deepen and lengthen, you regulate your breath with the ujjayi. The sound of the breath like the ocean, created by a gentle constriction in the muscles in the throat. Or you can think about resisting your own breath, or if there were a cat on your chest. Inhale, expansion of your ribcage. Exhale, pull navel inwards towards your spine. Good. Inhale, broad, a broad chest. Exhale, firmness in the lower belly and pelvic floor. Inhale, take your time to breathe, expanding the upper body. Exhale, remain active and as if the navel trying to kiss your spine. Like this, we breathe. Inhale for five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Good. The next inhale, gently guide the right knee to the chest in a tuck position. Take the next few moments with the hands clasped around the knee to pull the knee inwards towards the right shoulder. While you are here, gentle ankle rotations to open up the ankle and shin. Make your rotation in one direction and then the opposite direction and pointing, flexing the foot, going into the full range of motion of your ankle. Then when you're ready, gently allow that leg to fall to the side, still with the knee bent. As you do so, keep the left leg and the left hip grounding. Create for yourself an openness in the front of your hip. Create an inner leg stretch on your right leg. And stay with your breath as we gently prepare our body for the practice. Good. Slowly the leg comes back to the center line and the right leg can lower. When you're ready, opposite knee to the chest, clasping the knee with the hands to pull towards left shoulder. And again, take this opportunity to stretch and open up your ankles, gently rotating them, rotating your foot in one direction in the opposite direction and then you point and flex point and flex beautiful and when you're ready allowing that leg to fall to the side maintain grounding on the right side of your hip keep the right leg extending downwards maybe you can use your left hand to guide the left knee down even deeper 
to increase the stretching of the inner leg and front of your hips. Stay with the breath. Let's hold a few more moments here. Good. Okay. Now bring the feet in close to your hips with your knees bent. Separate the feet about mat width distance. As you make gentle side to side rocking motions, you bring one knee down to the center of the mat as you drop the other knee outwards. And then reversing this, you do this with your breath, gently, gently moving your hips. Rotational movements. Next, let's do a butterfly pose with the feet together, knees wide apart. <laughs> what are we going to do with this cat? Supta Vadakanasana, reclining butterfly. Again, you can take the option with a gentle, gentle pressure from the hands against the thighs to increase the stretch inner legs and groins, opening up for your practice. Stay for a few more moments. Coming out of the pose by gently closing the legs. Take your time, no rush, using the hands to support underneath your knees. Okay, cat, time to go. Bringing ourselves now to a tabletop pose, which is a hands and knees position. With the palms flat underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, begin again to move. Begin now to move as you breathe. Inhale, lift the chin as you lift the tailbone. Exhale, round the back, drop the head down, a tailbone between your legs. Inhale, arch again, lifting the chin up. Even pull the heart forwards between the arms. Exhale, round the back. Expansion of the upper, middle, and lower. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Next, inhale, then take your deepest, longest breath. And exhale, pushing the heart away from the mat, find broadness across the shoulders. Next, inhale, begin to extend your right foot back, right leg straight. As you exhale, it is a sideways tuck. Try to touch the right knee towards the right shoulder. Try again, inhale, lengthen the leg back with your hips squared. Next, exhale, as you keep the shin lifted towards the right, avoid lifting the right hip. Inhale, let's do this one more time. Exhale, sideways tuck. Good. One more breath in to extend the right leg back. Exhale as you bring right knee to right shoulder. Inhale to extend the leg back. And exhale this time as you bring the right knee to right shoulder. Carefully now step the foot down to the front corner of the mat as lightly as you can. Next, inhale, explore the cat-cow movements with your leg in this position as you exhale round the back. Take your time to breathe as you move, inhale. And move as you breathe, exhale, feeling the stretching of the right hip as you move. Inhale, the lift of the tailbone increases that stretch. Exhale, broad, broad shoulders and round that back. One more breath, inhale. Good, then straightening out the right leg, exhale, walk the body to the left slightly and come down slowly. We are in our Ardha Hanuman Asana variation, the half monkey pose, which is aimed at stretching out the hamstrings, is now modified to target your inner legs. Breathe the right leg straight, but you can keep a gentle micro bend in that knee if you have any tightness in the hips or hamstrings. 
and that will do. Then rock the body forwards again. And see if you can carry that right leg over the shelf created with your right arm if the elbow is slightly bent. Explore extending the leg. Try to make it as straight as you can. Good. And then sending your legs back. Inhale to arch your body. Exhale to round your back. Find the arch again in the spine. Inhale. Distribute your back bend. Exhale. Always in coordination with your breath, you move. Inhale, deep, long breath, open chest. And exhale, broad, broad shoulders. Good, and the length of your spine. Next, inhale. Now you extend your left leg back. As you exhale, left knee to left shoulder, sideways tuck. Good, inhale, extending left leg. And exhale. Again, avoid your lift of the left hip as you lift your left shin and you bring the leg forwards. Inhale, send it back. Exhale to find your sideways tuck. Good. And then one last time, lengthen that left leg back on the inhale. Bringing the left knee to the left shoulder. Exhale. Send the leg back, inhale, and with the left knee, left shoulder, transitioning to set the left foot down to the corner of the mat. Take a breath in, and then out. And move the spine as you breathe. And work to create the openness of your left hip. With the tilt of the pelvis in accordance to your breath. Inhale the lift of the tailbone. Exhale dropping the tailbone downwards as you round your spine. Creates that stretch and then releases that stretch. Your job is to stay present as you breathe while you move. So next inhale straight front leg and walk the hands to the right. Next exhale. Come down and stretch. Arda. Hanuman Asana variation. And stretching of your inner legs and hamstrings. Stay present with your breath. And that will do release slowly. Bring that left arm as much underneath your left leg as possible. This is your left thigh resting on the shelf created on the left upper arm. And then lifting the kneecap strong quad engagement to see if the leg can straighten and be carried by that arm. Good. Finding the muscle memory of the scissor shape and taking it back to tabletop pose. One breath in, arch the spine. On the exhale, curl the toes under the feet and lift your way up to your First, downward facing dog. Good. Paddling out your feet. Left and right heels and toes. With one knee bent and the other leg straight, we are switching and switching. As well, we are allowing the hips to sway gently side to side and one shoulder towards the mat at a time. Or whatever is part of your practice to open up your body. Good. Stay with the attention now in your breath as you maintain lengthening of your spine. Inhale, expansion of the ribcage in four directions. Exhale, pull navel inwards. Create firmness. Awaken bandhas. Beautifully directing your gaze at the knees or the navel as you follow your breath. Inhale, tiptoes. Exhale, knees to chest. Now look forwards where you want to go to. Next, inhale, we step carefully to the front of your mat in a halfway lift. And exhale, maintain length as you come down. Belly towards thigh, chest towards knee, chin towards shin. Rising up to standing, give the arms a big, beautiful stretching upwards on the inhale. Then come back down to the mat, forward bending, exhale. Work with your breath, halfway lifting, inhale. 
and step your left foot back with the left knee down. Exhale, let's find a low lunge pose. Inhale, expansion of the chest, extending the arms upwards. Ensure that you maintain a healthy length in the lower back by constantly drawing the tailbone downwards. Creating space then in the front of your left hip, a hip flexor stretch. Stay connecting between the front ribs and your hips. Exhale to bring hands downwards. Stepping the right foot back takes you to a three-legged dog. Good. Bringing the right knee to the chest on the exhale creates a strong tuck position. Now set the right foot down on the mat again and inhale rising up. This is a high lunge pose. The same pose without the back knee resting on the mat. Requires a strong front leg and a straight back leg. Stay with your breath as you extend the arms upwards. Try extending through the outer arms and avoid the inner arms. Exhale as you bring hands down. Straightening both your legs, grounding the back heel inwards towards the center of the mat. One breath to look upwards in a halfway lift. And one breath to come down to stretch your right hamstring. In Parasvottanasana, Pyramid Pose. Create that length in your spine to avoid too much discomfort in the lower back. This might mean you micro bend your right leg, as always, to protect the hamstrings. Good. Now your next transition, bend your right knee and balance on the right foot. As you lift the leg up behind you like a warrior three, exhale sideways, tuck gently and carefully with control. Keep the body as best as you can parallel with the mat. Inhale, then rise up to standing and close the door. Bring the knee back to the center line. As you bring the feet down to the mat, inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, right foot back, right knee down. Prepare now for a low lunge pose. Inhale, expansion and lengthening. Allow the hip to come down to the space between the legs. As you do so, though, please be active to hug two legs inwards towards each other to create stability in your hips. Good. Connection between the front ribs and hips today. Maintaining length in lower back. Open chest and open shoulders. That'll do. With the next exhale, relax. Place hands down and extend your left foot back. Three like a dog. Beautiful. Left knee to left chest. Exhale. Tiger curl. This is a strong tuck position. Keep the heel of the foot close to the hip. Now set the right foot, sorry, the left foot down on the mat in front of you with a strong front leg and a straight back left lift to a high lunge pose. And breathe. As you actively find the length and the expression of this pose, you might even gaze upwards or just gaze at the spot in front of you. Good. And with the next exhale, Take your time to slowly release the hands down to the mat. Pulling the hip back, square your hips. That means actively left hip backwards, right hip forwards. And exhale to fold. Pyramid pose. Parasvottanasana. And stay with the breath. The hands are gently supporting in this position. If you have tight hamstrings, you might micro bend the front leg or use blocks to support your hands. Find a variation that works too. Open up your left hamstring. We have a few more breaths. Good. When you're ready, make your transition to warrior three. Gently the hands to the heart. You are balancing the four corners of the left foot. Right foot starts to float. Now from your warrior three, sideways tuck. Carefully now, right knee, right shoulder, like what we did earlier. Stay with the body parallel with the mat. Inhale then, rise up with your strong back muscles and gently close the door. Right knee comes in. 
both feet comes down, exhale. Next inhale, arms up again. Exhale, forward bend. Stay with the breath, take a halfway lift, inhale. Stepping the left foot back, left knee down. Inhale, arms up. Good, exhale as you bring hands down. Extending right foot back to three, like a dog. And the exhale, let's do our first vinyasa, elbows bent, we come down, this can be supported on your knees. Inhale, and upward facing dog. And exhale, three-legged dog, keep the right leg extending. Bring the knee to the chest for a high lunge pose. Inhale, arms up with a strong front leg. Straight back leg, exhale, hands to the heart and rock the body forward. Left knee to left shoulder, sideways tuck. Inhale, rising up and closing the leg. Exhale, both feet down to the mat. Next breath in, arms up, next breath out, arms down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back for low lunge pose. Inhale, expansion of the front body. Exhale, take your left foot back now. Good. Rock forward to do one more vinyasa. Elbows bent, chaturanga. Inhale and upward facing dog. Take it to a three-legged dog. Left leg lift, exhale. Tuck the knee to the chest. Inhale, high lunge pose. Beautiful, now bring the hands together and rock the body forwards. Sideways, tuck right knee, right shoulder. One breath to lift up using your strong back muscles. One breath to close your legs and both feet down. Inhale, arms extending upwards. Exhale, forward bending. Inhale, halfway lifting. Exhale, this time walk, jump or float back to plank with the elbows bent, chaturanga. One vinyasa. Or if you wish, just arrive and downward facing dog. Then lifting the right leg to three-legged dog. Exhale, tuck the knee to the chest. Rise up to a high lunge pose on the inhale. Exhale, opens the body up to the left. Back heel grounding. Warrior two. Vira Padrasana two. Still the front knee stacks above the ankle of the foot. And you have an active outer hip on the right leg to keep the knee or to keep the hip open. Reverse your warrior, take the right arm up, inhale, up and over, sliding the left hand down your back leg. On the exhale, find your side angle pose. Elbow to knee or hand to the mat as you extend the opposite arm forward. You create a straight line in the body. If the body is open, perhaps the bottom hand touching the mat. Good. And let's reverse this again. One more breath up on the inhale. Both legs are straight as you drop the right hip, reach the right arm forward and it comes down. Ankle, shin, or touch the mat. Left arm is extending upwards. Your chest is open, your hips are open. Chest and hips in line with each other. Uthida, Trikonasana, triangle pose. Good. Now bring your left hand to the hip and slowly, slowly. You want the right hand one to two feet in front of the foot and slightly to the right. Support it. In the four corners of the right foot, you should be light on the foundation hand instead. When you're ready, extending the left arm upwards. And breathe, finding the balance either with the gaze sideways or even upwards if you are stable. Half moon, balancing pose and take your option here to grab the foot with your hand. Kicking the leg backwards as you counterbalance the body forwards to find Ardha Chapasana, your sugar cane pose variation. Good. And release, place both hands down. Make a small hop back to do one more vinyasa. Or just choose to arrive at downward facing dog. Then let's do this again. Next, inhale, lift and extend your left leg upwards. Beautiful. Tuck the knee to the chest. Exhale, make your transition. Set the left foot down on the mat in front of you with a strong front leg and a straight back leg lift to high lunge pose. And turning to the right, arms extending, back heel grounding. Warrior two. Good. Stay with your breath. We are holding this pose, not holding the breath. When you are established in your position, 
The next few movements require the lower body to be stable and exactly like the warrior two shape. Just move the upper body. Reach the left arm forwards. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Good. With your next exhale, left elbow to knee or left hand down to the mat. Right arm extend to create a straight line. From the back heel to the fingertips extending. Breathe, finding openness in your side angle pose. Parsva Konasana. Good. Then you take one more reverse warrior position. One more reverse warrior. Inhale, left arm up and right arm slides down your back leg. And on the exhale, both legs straight this time, lowering the left hip, bringing the left hand down, ankle, shin or touching the mat, right arm open, and following with your gaze. Creating an inner leg stretch on the left side and a right outer hip opening. If you want to deepen the pose, you would might even work to bring the left hip under the right hip a little bit more. Uthida Trikonasana Extended Triangle Pose Good, your transition now to Ardha Chandrasana, the pose we practiced in last week's basic level class. Light on the foundation hand Balanced on the left leg. Using your strong outer hip muscles. And extending right arm upwards when you're ready. One straight line from the crown of the head to the back heel extending back behind you. And stay balanced here or take the option if you feel open, if you feel stable. Gently bring the right foot in. Catch the ankle of the foot with your right hand. As you kick that foot firmly away from the body, kick it backwards and then counter by bringing the body forwards. Good. And explore the shape that you can create. And that will do relax. <laughs> Elbows bent, one vinyasa to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, let's walk, jump, or float to the front of the mat. And with the exhale, forward bend. Next, inhale, arms upwards again. And then bring the hands down. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, forward bend. Next, inhale, is a chair pose with the knees bent. Next, exhale, you step out your legs to face your left side of the mat, arms extending. Goddess pose from goddess, straight legs forward bend in the swan dive, arms apart. Stay with the breath as we hold here and focus on how straight you can make your spine. You are awakening your strong posterior chain. And coordinate with the breath with the swimming motion. Inhale, arms forwards. Exhale, pull the hands down to the heart. Inhale, arms forwards. Exhale, pull down to the heart. Again, inhale, use your strong back muscles, strong shoulders, extend arms. Exhale, come down to the heart. Inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale. On the exhale, Prasarita Padottanasana. You are now in a wide-legged forward bend. So keeping the feet parallel, your legs straight, but you can micro-bend your knees. Have your hands on the mat in line with the toes and guide the crown of the head down as close to the mat as you can. Maybe one day in this position your head is able to touch the mat. Keep the length in your spine, the lift of the tailbone, the spread of the sit bones and if you wish press the palms down firmly to lift the feet off the mat finding your tripod headstand. And today we have straddle leg position which means Try as best as you can to keep your legs straight, lifting the kneecaps, extending strongly outwards to your yogi toes. Good. And then when you're ready, bring the feet down exactly where they came from. Take a halfway lift, looking up and ensuring that there is no nausea or giddiness in the body. 
And then goddess pose with the knees bent. Inhale. Exhale, stepping forward, chair pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward bend. Take a halfway lift, inhale. And walk, jump or float back. Exhale, do one vinyasa. Or take the option to arrive at downward facing dog. You are leveling the practice according to the intensity your body needs. Inhale, right leg lift. Exhale, a sideways tuck, right knee, right shoulder. Setting the right foot down in the corner of the mat and you can rest your left knee on the mat as well now. Take the next few breaths, resting the body in lizard pose. And as you rest, you stretch out your right hip. Maximize that stretch by keeping the length in the right side of the body. And try to keep the right knee as well close to the shoulder. Good. Your next pose is going to be the essential level class pose, which is Varshistasana 2. Side plank can be practiced with the left forearm on the mat or left palm, left arm straight. Turning to the right, resting on the knife edge of the right foot, lift your right leg up. Grabbing onto the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb and take your option today to extend the leg fully. Breathe with the hip high so that you are able to ground your left foot. Keep the chest open and use your strong right outer hip to ensure the openness of that right leg. Beautiful. Stepping the foot back to the corner of the mat takes you to lizard pose. From lizard pose position, simply bring that left leg through and forwards to find your half squat. In this squat, you want to keep your left leg extending. You can take the option to hold the big toe with the right hand or try to float the left leg like what I'm doing. This conditions the front of your hip. Once you are ready, stepping back to do one vinyasa. Good. Let's do this again. Left leg lift to three legged dog. Sideways tuck brings the knee to the shoulder. Left foot comes down to the corner of the mat. Right knee down as well. Resting lizard pose. Take a few breaths. As you breathe, you are also stretching out your left hip. Allow the hip then to come down as low as it can go. Good. Again, you can do your side plank variation with the right forearm on the mat or with the right palm flat and arm straight. Turn the body to the left. Find the grounding on the knife edge of the right foot and extend your tucked left leg staying there or grasping the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb. Maybe extending the left leg upwards beautifully to find Vashistasana 2, side plank 2. And again, with your strong left outer hip engagement that is responsible for keeping the openness of this pose. Carefully now, set the left leg down where it came from, to the corner of the mat. And let's bring the right leg through to the front to find your half squatting position. So try to keep the body weight on the left foot, try to keep the left foot flat. You float the right leg straight and off the mat as best as you can, conditioning the front of your hip, which then contributes to your hip opening poses and even in your scissor shape. Benefits from this engagement. Sending the leg back and the left leg lifts. One vinyasa with the elbows bent. Or just take the option to arrive at downward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Stay strong. We have one more beautiful pose to explore today. Inhale, take the right leg up to three-legged dog. Exhale, let's do a twist. So bring the right knee over to the left shoulder. As you twist now, extend the leg all the way to the left and try your best to not even touch the foot to the mat. Left arm open. This takes you to another side plank variation. A fallen a triangle which really starts to fire up your inner legs. Then with both hands to the mat, the right leg extends. And then one more sideways tuck with the elbows bent like Chaturanga. 
Stay here, carrying the right leg on the shelf, create it with the right upper arm or take your option, counterbalance the body forward more and see if you can use your strong back muscles to lift the back foot off the mat. Ekapada, Kodinyasana number two. Good. Then taking both feet back, Chaturanga Dandasana, from there is a vinyasa to down dog pose. And we can do this one more time, but for now, stay in down dog, breathe and recover from your strong, strong practice. If you have lost the ujjayi, please bring it back. If your mind has wandered from the practice, anchor and ground it in your body. Good, inhale, left leg lift. Exhale, left knee opposite elbow. Inhale, lifting the right hand up to find your side plank variation. Stay with the breath. Find the inner leg engagement by trying to float your left foot off the mat, left leg straight. Good, that'll do, place both hands down. Left leg extends back, three-legged dog. Exhale, brings the sideways tuck to the left. Good, staying here with the back foot on the mat or if it is your time today to lift the back leg upwards. Body weight forward, strong back muscles. Arms hugging inwards, shoulders broad, upper body lifting, back leg strong. And then an upward facing dog. And a down dog pose. From downward facing dog. Jumping our way through to a seated position. As we jump forward, can we sit with the right leg over the left leg crossing? With your knees together and the feet on either side of the hips to bring ourselves to Dhyana Virasana, meditating hero pose. Lifting the left arm up, bring the hand in the space between the shoulders behind you. Hold the left elbow, then with the right hand, and this gives your shoulder a stretch. Stay with the lift, the chest, and as you lift your chin, the head gently pushes back to increase the stretch on your shoulder. Staying here, or if you wish, you might reach back with the right arm. From behind the body, see if your hands can clasp together. Otherwise, take your option to continue to hold the top elbow. Good. Now let's take one breath in, looking upwards, and then lengthen all the way forwards. This starts to increase the stretching of the shoulders and your hips as well. This is an outer hip stretch. It releases the tension created from our sequence earlier. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, now let's twist, bringing the left hand past your right leg and with your right hand on the mat behind you to support a straight spine. Move the chin over to the right shoulder. Inhale as you untwist gently now, cross the legs the opposite way. Left leg over the right. Again, try your best to bring the knees together in this pose and sit with the feet on either side of the hips. Good, right arm up and over, bring the hand down to the space between the shoulders. Hold the elbow with the left hand. And take a few breaths here, gently pushing back the right elbow, opening of the right shoulder. Taking the option even, you might reach back with your left hand now to see if the hands can clasp together behind the body, both shoulders achieving a stretch. Good. So lengthening the body on the inhale, and you have the option to fold forwards on the exhale. Stay with your breath as we hold. Gomuk Asana. Cow face pose. That'll do. Inhale, rising back upwards again. Exhale, let's twist to the left. So right hand over the left leg. Left hand supporting a straight spine on the mat behind you. Moving the chin over to the left. 
staying with a proud, proud chest. Maintain a healthy lengthening of both sides of your body. Exhale as you untwist. Let's bring the body down to the mat, lying flat, face up in a supine position. Walk your feet in close to the hips and ensure that your feet and knees are no wider than the distance of your hips, feet parallel. Inhale, simply lift the arms overhead. And exhale, the arms come down slowly. Practice moving with your breath. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, arms down. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Next inhale is a bigger movement as you lift arms up, also lift your hips. And exhale as you lower hips down, arms come down as well. Try again, inhale, hips high, arms overhead. And this time stay with the hips high as you lower the arms, clasp the hands together behind the body. Take a moment to walk the shoulder blades underneath the chest a little bit more, gives you a foundation in the upper arms. Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, you are now in a bridge pose. Ensure that you maintain a gentle hugging inward motion of your legs. As you keep the height of the hips, also consider lifting the heart upwards towards your chin to find more distribution of the back bend in the upper body. And that will do. Exhale, relax what you are doing. Reverse your pose by bringing the knees to the chest and holding the knees with your hands. Stay a moment here, decompressing the lower back. Good. So let's do this one more time. And in your second round, you have the option, instead of bridge pose, you might be doing a wheel pose instead. If you want to take that option, then hands on either side of the head, elbows hugging in close, and lifting the body in three. Two, and one. Inhale, hip high. Chest open to fully extend the arms as best as you can. Keep the thighs hugging inwards. Try stacking the shoulders above your wrists. Stay with the breath. The inhale expands the chest. Good. Urdhva Dhanurasana, wheel pose. One more breath. And then when you're ready, chin to the chest. As you bend the elbows to lower the body down carefully towards the mat. And as you rest, bring the knees to the chest again. Hold the knees with both your hands. Decompress your lower back. Good. Reclining twist. Left leg crossing over the right leg like an eagle pose. This can also be done with the knees together. Bring your cross legs over to the right as you spread out your left arm and the head rolls to the left. The inhale, untwist and uncross your legs. Let's do this on the opposite side. So right over left as you twist to the left or take the option to just keep your knees together. Spreading the right arm, the head rolls to the right so the neck can also enjoy a beautiful twist. Breathe along the length of your spine. Create the openness in the right shoulder, right outer hip. Now release as we explore Viparita Karani, a gentle inversion posture, legs in the air. You can support this with the hands underneath the hips. And if your legs feel tight and it is hard to maintain, also consider micro bending the leg. Staying here as an option, or perhaps you would rock the hips up and over the shoulders, 
touching the toes to the mat behind you to find Halasana, Plow Pose Position. Clasping the hands together behind the body will facilitate the hugging inwards motion of the shoulders to keep the elbows close to each other. And then your option of lifting the legs upwards to find shoulder stand one at a time or both together. And stay for five, four, three, two, and one vertebrae at a time. Let's slowly come down. As we unwrap the body and come down to the mat, resting the hips over both your hands to find fish pose or matsi asana. Extending legs straight, feet together. Inhale, start to lift the heart off the mat by pressing down into the forearms. Good, and then opening the throat, lifting the chin. In this pose, ensure that you are light on the crown of the head and the heels as well. Stay with the foundation on the forearms. Breath by breath, keep expanding the heart, opening the throat. That'll do. Exhale, relaxing. With the arms and legs spread comfortably wide with toes outwards, heels inwards and palms facing upwards, eyes gently closed, Hello, Prakriti. Taking rest in Shavasana. So thank you very much for joining today's practice. Keep practicing with joy in the body and peace in the heart. Namaste and see you soon.